Hello guys and welcome to my new video. So today I'm going to be doing a 7.25 beginners balance druid guide. So this is going to be covering things like talents, legendary, stat priority and basically the gameplay for balance druid. It's going to be aimed at people who are looking to re-roll into the balance druid role or trying to find a bit more information on how to play this DPS spec. So let's have a look at the talents that are available for balance true. So what you see on the screen right now is the utmost AoE talent build. So this is basically acceptable for fights where there's going to be multiple ads. The ads are going to live for a long time. If you want to compare it to a 5 month scenario, this is basically the build that you would use for heavy AoE mythic plus dungeon with fortified. So you have in the tier 15 warrior of Valoon, you have displacer beast restoration affinity typhoon you have a 75 aoe talent soul of the forest with a 90 talent shooting star and stellar drift this is basically going to allow you to cast starfall and starfall is going to deal a lot of damage starfall is going to be your main um, damage output and in order for it to be main damage output, you basically have to be fighting two or more targets. So it's going to work great on really big trash balls. And if those mobs stay for as long time as possible, that's what Balance Druid AoE will shine. Let's have a look at a pure single target talent build. So this is something that you want to use when you're fighting raid bosses where there is absolutely no ads uh, during the fight or mid or in mythic plus content for an affix such as tyrannical where the boss is going to have much more hp than the ads and you're going to be spending much more time actually fighting a boss rather than dealing with the ads so in this build you choose star lords star lords is a better single target dps talent you still have displacer beast restora restoration affinity typhoon and in 75 you choose incarnation which basically gives you a better three minute cooldown in level in tier 90 you choose blessing of the ancients and if you actually choose blessing of the ancients you have the possibility of using two buffs uh, that basically generate astral power the only viable option for single target is blessing of a loon so make sure that you have blessing of a loon selected if you have blessing of the ancients talent now for tier 100 the best choice for single target is nature's balance like i said before this is a pure single target build you won't be casting or your starfall won't be doing a lot of damage with this build you will be relying on star surges and things like that and on your basically your three minute cooldown to actually do some significant dps so make sure to choose this build only if you're sure that there is no ads in the fight as this build provides absolutely no benefit in aoe fights keep in mind that sometimes especially in mythic plus content you will want to go a more balanced route uh, in terms of talent so what do i mean by this uh, you'll probably want to have a mixture of aoe talents and a mixture of single target talents especially for mythic affixes such as uh, non-fortified basically for mythic mythic affixes such as tyrannical ads won't probably stay for as long so you'll want to have some kind of a single target damage but you might also want to provide enough damage with your starfall so this is a like a personal build that I go with depending on the of course mythic affixes I go with star lord just because you all there's always going to be need for a single target dps during mythic plus bosses I go with displacer beast restoration affinity typhoon I and 75 tier I change between soul of the forest and incarnation based on what kind of dungeon I'm doing if I'm doing things like more of souls so there's three bosses and if it's tyrannical i most likely will go with incarnation chosen of a uh, chosen of a loon of course if you feel that your group does not have heavy aoe and that the ads are going to stay for a long time soul the forest and stellar drift with a combination of stellar drift is great now in tier 90 talent you basically going to rotate between shooting stars and blessing of the ancients i like to actually choose choosing stars if i go with soul of the forest talent in 75 now in tier 100 i'm almost always go with stellar drift just because i like to cast 
my Starfall and being able to uh, basically cast while in Starfall, you're able to move and cast uh, at the same time, which is very, very useful in Mythic Plus content. And because Nature Balance extends your dot duration, so you don't have to recast it. But I find myself in Mythic Plus content that every time I move because of specific abilities, I will be recasting Moonfire and Sunburn as I dodge those specific boss or add abilities. Now, as you can probably tell, there are two very specific builds for Balanced Druid. You have a very specific talent build for single target and AoE, and this kind of correlates to the stat priority. Now, it's very interesting to note that for Balanced Druid, Intellect is actually the worst stat. You want to get as much mastery and haste along with some crit and versatility and intellect. So mastery is a stat that's going to benefit your AoE spells the most, while haste is a stat that's going to benefit your single target the most. So this is a specific pawn string which will give you a overview of what stats to actually use. So for the people who don't know what pawn is, it's an add-on that allows you to compare different pieces of gear based on a, based on stat weights and you can in the description there's going to be a link to the pawn itself and the stat weights that are accepted by majority of balanced druids and I highly advise you to use this like I said mastery and haste are the best stats to use of course you don't want to stack one too much because if you stack something uh, beyond reasonable amounts other stats are going to become better so use the pawn string at the be beginning of your balance truth careers to actually get a feel for what stats work the best for you. Now let's look at the legendaries that are available for balance truth. Like mentioned before, there are legendaries for single target and AoE. There are really about four legendaries that you really, really want to get. At the moment, the best single target legendaries are the Emerald Dreamcatcher and on its intuition. Now, because of the tier sets, the most recommended tier set for Balanced Druid to use is tier 24 set and tier 19 2 set. Tier 19 2 set is recommended to use shoulders and the back just because of how, just because of the amount of intellect you get and stats for those specific slots. So, if you're using tier 24 set and tier 19 2 set, you won't be able to use the Emerald Dreamcatcher because it takes your head slot. You most likely will be using on its intuition an impeccable Fell Essence, which is the ring. Now, if we actually look at the best AoE legendaries, the best one by quite a quite a margin is Lady and the Child, and again, on its intuition. These two legendaries uh, combined will provide you the most AoE damage like I said before it seems to be that on its intuition is really really strong legendary while used for single target and AoE so if you get any combination of these of these legendaries like I like to mention on its intuition Emerald Dreamcatcher impeccable fell essence uh, lady and the child and even soul of the arch druid you can kind of combine these legendaries to work for you for either AoE or single target situations. The relics again for Balanced Druid is kind of complicated because they're going to be representing single target and AoE encounters. Uh, for a single target by far the best one is Side of the Stars, while for uh, AoE encounters with 5 targets uh, plus Falling Star, Twilight, Glow and Sunfire Burns are pretty much the best ones to use. So the overall ranking would be something like Side of the Stars is number 1, Falling Star is 2nd, Twilight Glow is 3rd and Sunfire Burns are 4th. So this is something that you can uh, follow. Uh, you can use these relics for the best single target slash AoE fights. Hello guys, so let's have a look at a single target rotation for a balanced druid. It's actually quite simple and it follows a kind of a priority uh, spell rotation. First of all, you want to make sure that your Moonfire and Sunfire are on the target. You want to make sure that you don't overcap on your Astral Power. So that means it does not go over, go over 100. Uh, if you have enough to cast for Star Search, which is 40, 
you can cast Star Surge. Uh, you also want to make sure that it, by casting Star Surge you will get Empowered uh, Solar Wrath and Empowered Lunar Strike. You, wanna, you also have Moon spells. You want to make sure to always keep them... Basically you want to make sure that you're always going to use up the 3 charges because they slowly regenerate. So once you have used up the 3 charges, you keep the dots on the target. You, you can see that you have 89 Astral Power. You want to use Star Surge. You can use... You see that you have 3 Empowered Solar Rats and 3 Empowered uh, Lunar Strikes. You want to use Solar Rats first, then Lunar Strikes. Only use Lunar Strike if it's Empowered. And your filler spell is Solar Wrath. So if we go... If we go on back and do it again. Moonfire, Sunfire. Make sure you use up all your uh, Moon Spells. Uh, cast Star Surge in order not to become overcapped on Astral Power. Use up your Empowered Solar Rats and use up your Empowered Lunar Strikes. And once you have nothing to do, just cast Solar Wrath. And this is uh, the very basic single target rotation for a Balanced Druid. Now let's look at a multi target rotation for a Balanced Druid. Um, for which few things actually change. Starfall becomes your biggest friend. So Starfall usually takes 60 Astral Power to use if you have Soul of the Forest, which you should in multi-target um, multi environment. It will cost 40, which is actually a big deal. So again, let's say we have these two targets here. Uh, the big thing here to notice that you should be using Starfall instead of Star Surge anytime there is two and plus targets. So we make sure we have, make sure we're in a form, make sure we have Moonfire, Sunfire on both of these targets. If you feel that these targets are going to live long enough for your Moonfire, you only apply Moonfire if you feel that they're going to live long enough because Sunfire applies itself in a, in a radius to multiple targets while Moonfire you kind of have to keep tabbing unless you have the legendary Lady of the Child, Lady and the Child. So we keep Sunfire and Moonfire on as many targets as possible depending on how long they're gonna live. You wanna use your Moon spells, you wanna make sure to uh, use them on cooldown in order to prevent overcapping. And then you're basically going to be casting Starfall. And you most likely will be using in two, uh, in two person uh, target scenario, you'll be casting Solar Wrath. If you know that your Lunar Strike is going to hit three targets, so at the moment it's actually hitting just uh, two. If you know that it's going to be hitting three targets, you should be casting Lunar Strike instead of Solar Wrath. But in this case scenario, we make sure that we have we're casting Starfall as much as we can. Remember, you can cast multiple Starfalls. As you can see, I actually have three Starfalls running. So make sure to keep casting Starfalls. Make sure to keep Moonfire, Sunfire on the target. And make sure that you always use up your moon spells when they're available. So this is actually a simple enough rotation. Starfall is your friend. And also always remember, two and more targets, Starfall is going to be better than Star Surge. Thank you for watching this little overview of Balanced Druids. Uh, let me know if this was somewhat helpful. It was meant to be a very quick beginner's uh, Balanced Druid guide. It's supposed to give you just an overview of how to start playing a balanced druid. I know a lot of the resto druid guides, uh, druid, uh, druid guys were asking me for a little overview of how to actually swap over to balance. So I hope it helped out people. Let me know how you feel about this guide and I'll see you in my next video.